So in this video, we're going to go over PT2399 delay pedals and how their feedback system works. So here we have our regular Boy & Well PT2399 delay pedal. And this is my clean signal. And we have all the knobs at noon. So I'm going to engage the pedal. And it sounds relatively normal. However, one of the things that we'd like to know how to do is create an infinite feedback to get this kind of effect. However, it's not very conducive for me to be bending over all the time and pressing that repeats button. So, is there a way that we can summon this effect at will? Well, let's take a look at the schematic for this pedal and get a better understanding and see what we can do. So, here we have the schematic for the Boy & Well Delay, which is a PT2399 delay, on our website, www.diyguitarpedals.com.au. And we've gone over this before in a previous video, which I'll put a link to in the description below. But one of the things we didn't really cover well on that video was the feedback path. So we're going to go over that now so that we can have an understanding of how to make it do infinite repeats. So let's quickly go over the basics of the schematic. Again, we have our input buffer. And then we have our output buffer and mixer right here, which takes the wet and dry signals, mixes them together, and then spits them out to your amplifier. But as we go down here, we're going to notice the actual PT2399 delay. So how this works is we have our input signal coming in this way, going into pin 16 of the PT2399, getting its little process, leaving pin 14, going through a little bit of filtering, and then makes it out to the output buffer and then out to your amplifier. Now, if that was just how this worked, this is how that signal would flow. Say we have our, our time or delay knob set to, we'll just say roughly a half a second and we hit a guitar note, uh, hit a string, hit a note, and it creates a signal. So we hit that signal, it goes in here, it waits a half a second, that's the delay, and then leaves out this guy and then makes it out the output buffer. And because the buffer is a mixer, the output buffer takes the original note, and then the note that precedes that a half a second later, and then you get two notes. So you'll hear dit, dit, that kind of a thing. Now, if that was all that there was, you know, that's that's great, but obviously a delay pedal does a little bit more than that. We have a fading out effect of echoes. So what's going on there is we hit our note, it goes in, it gets processed, a half a second later, we get something that leaves the output of the PT2399 and then makes it out the output buffer. But as you can see here, there's a second path that can follow where it goes through this filter here and then goes through this repeats knob. If the repeats knob is set to you know nothing, then it's grounded out and the signal doesn't make it beyond here. But if there isn't a grounding out of this repeats knob, then the signal will flow through that RC filter, through the repeats knob, go out through this RC filter, and then back into the circuit. And then that is how you get the repeats slowly fading out because as we increase the knob on this one, we're decreasing the resistance between these two legs right here, lugs two and three. But there is a resistance there. There's also a resistance right here. So the larger the resistance, the less of the signal that's echoing back makes it into the pedal. So now that we know this, now we know how to get an infinite set of repeats. And the way to do that is to simply short these two legs out as basically when we turn the knob all the way to max. Or another option is to have a switch, not just short this out, but also to lower this resistance value as well. But this also plays into that whole filter. Now, when we drew this schematic up, this was more to fit it in the actual schematic page. So let's get a better look at that feedback loop. So here we have a simplified schematic of the Boy & Well feedback loop. Leaving the PT2399, our signal goes through this coupling capacitor and then potentially just leaves the volume knob or level knob of the delay. However, we can also feed back. 
So as our signal feeds back, it goes through this RC filter here. This is a low pass filter. And this low pass filter has a cut somewhere between 1.6 and 1.7 kilohertz. Kind of giving that tail echo delay uh, dark feel, dark sound. So to make those delays sound dark, we have this filter that cuts off any frequencies above 1.7 kilohertz. Now, after it makes it past this low pass filter, we go to our repeats knob. If the repeats knob is set to zero, the signal's grounded out, and there's a large amount of resistance, 50k ohms, between here and here. However, as we turn the knob up, the resistance from ground starts to get greater and greater, and the resistance between here and here gets lower and lower. And then after it passes through here, the signal goes through this high pass filter, which we got to sum these two resistors up to calculate that high pass filter. Um, but it cuts somewhere around the 400 hertz mark, uh, giving it kind of a bad bass response for the echoes. Now, this is kind of important because a terrible bass response on the echoes is something kind of a, an audio signature of the old school tape delays that are out there. So this is our little way of imitating that. It's not going to sound exact, but it gives that same type of feel and effect. If you want to make it have more of a terrible bass response on the on the echoes, just uh, lower the capacitance of C23. However, you could also increase the resistance here on these resistors, particularly R20, but you may not want to do that if we're trying to get this whole feedback thing going. So earlier, when I twisted the knob up and basically set it to max, that meant our potentiometer here has 50 ohms of resistance to ground and almost zero ohms going straight into this path. So if we made a momentary switch that bridges here to here between lugs two and three of the potentiometer, we can instantly get that feedback. And if it's a momentary switch, we can also let go of that switch to kill the feedback immediately. So this can kind of give you an interesting, you know, ambient or shoegaze effect when you're playing with this pedal. So let's solder up a crude example and show you what I mean. So here we have the Boy and Well modified. Now, if I would have known I was gonna do this mod ahead of time, I would have probably put this in a larger enclosure or moved my stomp switch over a bit because there's not really much room to fit that stomp switch in there, but the idea still holds. So here we have our repeat potentiometer, the backside of it. And we have legs two and three with the black and red wire that I chose here, respectively, uh, going out to a momentary switch. And it's a soft switch, so it's just you press down and it connects, and then when you let go, it disconnects. So these two wires here, when I'm not stomping on it, don't touch, but when I press down on it, they do touch. So how that would work if I had this enclosed in this pedal, or maybe I make a little project box that I put this guy in by itself, kind of like a mock expression pedal, it would sound something to this effect. So right now we have our delay on and we have our setup here. And that's normal. However, if we engage the stomp switch that I'm put over here, So there you have it. That's how you can create an ambient feedback effect with your PT2399 delay pedal. Not only will this work on our boy and well, but it works on any PT2399 circuit. So like the Mad Professor Deep Blue Delay, the Mad Bean Sea Urchin works that way. A lot of the ones I've seen from Earthquaker devices that use the PT2399, this will work. Um, this will also work on Bucket Brigade device type delays. Uh, such as the really old boss, um, i trying to remember which one was the analog delay on that one, but anyways, the, the really old uh, quote-unquote analog delays uh, from boss will work that way. I know Ibanez also made one too that used a bucket brigade device uh, delay chip circuit. 
you can get that same feedback going through on that. And I say that to say this, it works on Bucket Brigade devices, it works on PT2399s, it will not work on a lot of digital delay pedals. Uh, on a digital delay pedal, the feedback can be set to a very low resistance, and it doesn't go into that self-oscillating uh, feedback loop style effect that you got here. Uh, in those cases, the digital delay is cleanly replicating that sound over and over and over again, and we call that a loop pedal or a looper pedal. So it doesn't quite have that same effect, but there you go. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, press that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you wish to support us, please visit our website, which is www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and check out our PCBs, our parts and kits, as that'll really help us out. In this video right here, we featured the Boy and Well, so I'll have a link to that in the description below. Check that pedal out if you want to make yourself a delay and uh, use a large en larger enclosure if you wish to include this mod with it. Anyways, that's it. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.